the 2022 Buffalo Bills superlatives and looking forward to free agency this week on the Wandering Buffalo podcast. You are now listening to the Wandering Buffalo podcast with your hosts, Justin Goddard and Andrew Chang. Welcome in and thank you again for joining me on another episode of the Wandering Buffalo podcast, a show on the Buffalo Fanbase Podcast Network. Uh, My name is Justin, I will be your host today, and this episode is brought to you by 26 Shirts. Uh, We've been working with 26 Shirts for a while, if you haven't done so, uh, check out what they got. Tons of cool stuff and they do a lot of great work in the community. Um, So you get some sweet gear and you're also... uh, Helping out a good cause. Um, on this week's episode, we're going to start off doing uh, just a quick uh, 2022 superlative awards um, for this team this year. Uh, just kind of take one more chance to reflect back on the season. Um, unfortunately, with being eliminated, uh, it's kind of a, a bittersweet moment for me because I, I do love the off season. I love the roster construction. I love seeing the changes in teams. Um, unfortunately, I'd much rather be, you know, playing in the the championship game today. But here we are. So, uh, second part of the show, we're going to look into the Bills um, free agents that we have on the roster right now. Um, next week, we'll be looking into kind of a. A wish list and a little bit of predictive on where we think the Bills might spend some of their money this year. Um, so getting started with some of the awards. Um, right off the top, I got to go with my my team MVP, and I'm not really uh, I'm not really looking at anybody other than um, Josh Allen here. And I know the last game was kind of rough and. You know, I know there's some rough spots this season with uh, some turnovers and whatnot, but what Josh Allen means to this team and how many games we are able to win, um, just kind of putting the game on his back. Um, there's not really anybody else that I'm willing to give this award to. He's in the top three quarterbacks in the NFL, and I don't know, Burrow's creeping up there, but. I'm still not putting them at number three, so just an absolute weapon for this team and just so glad that he's our quarterback now and going forward. Uh, My offensive player of the year, um, we're going to make that a player that's not (laughs) Josh Allen, Uh, has to be Stephon Diggs for me, and there were some weeks that he was a little bit quiet and... Um, you know, it seems like teams were able to take him out of the game plan. Um, but week in and week out, there was no other player on this offense that had big games, came through in big moments. And, you know, for, for a long time this season, he was averaging like a hundred yards a game. And every week we were talking about, you know, Felt like a quiet day for Diggs for a minute, and then all of a sudden, you know, he creeps up and he's got 100 yards. Um, So definitely have to go to Stefan Diggs there. Um, My defensive player of the year, I'm going with... This one was tough for me. Um, I feel like we could go a couple different ways on this one. Um, There's a lot of players that had really good seasons. We saw... Uh, Milano and Edmonds really thrive with Daquan Jones and that defensive line in front of them. Um, kind of what we've what we've been waiting for them um, for so long to kind of have that opportunity with the players in front of them. Uh, but I have to give this one to my guy Jordan Poyer. Um, one loss on the whole season when Poyer was in the lineup. Um, just an absolute uh, monster for this defense. He covers up so much of you know the errors and stuff on the back end of the defense and just so integral to what this defense does from the safety position 
And he's one that's going to be coming up that we're going to talk about at the safety position that um, as a free agent is going to be a, a huge decision for the Bills this year. Um, offensive rookie of the year and defensive rookie of the year. I think these are two pretty easy choices on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, it, it's got to be James Cook for me. Um, he did start a little bit slow as it seemed like he was trying to, you know, figure out the pace of the NFL and whatnot. Um, but towards the end of the season, he started having some really big games. He showed, uh, incredible speed and shiftiness. Um, just something that we haven't really seen from the running back position on this team in a long time. Um, no hate against Singletary here, but just a different dynamic, the speed dynamic that we've kind of been missing. And on the defensive side of the ball, I almost went Benford here because he had such a strong start to the season. Um, and Elam started out slow. Um, but towards the end of the season, I, I got to pivot to Kyer Elam here. I think he ended the year really strong and makes me really excited for what we're looking at um, at that CB2 position going forward. My biggest disappointment on the season, I gave this one to Roger Saffold. Um, he's a guy I was super excited to bring in in free agency, um, kind of sure up that guard position, and I just feel like he did not play up to the level of I was expecting. Now, he is a bit older, and he was brought in on a one-year deal. I just found myself so disappointed in that acquisition at times. Um, I, I think there was times that he made Deion Dawkins look worse. Um, just overall disappointing from, from Saffold. Um, and my most pleasant surprise was Daquan Jones. Um, this is a guy that I was also really excited that we brought in. And, you know, for how long we talked about wanting to free up the linebackers. And that's what we had Star for. And, you know, we never got to see these linebackers play free because Star was always hurt. Well, we got a healthy Daquan Jones the majority of the season. And we saw the impact that that had. Um we also saw the impact that it had in the Bengals game without Daquan Jones in there. Granted, I'm not saying that we would have won that game had Daquan Jones played. Um, but the linebackers looked significantly worse in that game. Um, Ed Oliver didn't look like he had the same impact. The defensive line didn't look like they were all moving at the same pace. Um, so I think we saw uh, what a difference he makes on this defense not just being, you know, uh, a space filler in the middle. Um, I think he was able to collapse the pocket a little bit, penetrate from the middle. Um, and him working next to Ed Oliver, they, they were just better together. Um, so that's my pick for the most pleasant surprise. Um, if you guys have any comments on this, any categories you want to throw in there for different awards, um, hit us up in the comments. Let me know what you think about my picks. I'm going to take a quick break and we're going to start looking at the uh, free agents for the Bills this season. Stick around. Hey, this is Brother Bill. Now back to the show. Welcome back in and thank you again for joining me on this week's episode of the Wandering Buffalo podcast. If you made it this far, just ask that you like, share, subscribe, uh, share with a friend. Um, it really helps us out in bringing out this, these episodes every week. Um, Greatly appreciate it, and we thank you for taking your time to do that. I uh, just want to talk about some of the free agents coming up this offseason, and I guess kind of a little bit my predictions. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time on a lot of these guys, um, just because there's so many free agents. Um, it's kind of increased because Bean likes to do a lot of one-year deals, um, so it's a lot of people that were just brought in this season and, you know, a lot of times we see them play their one year and they're done and Bean replaces them with other guys like that. Um, so just running through the list real quick, these are all kind of guys that I don't really expect to be back. I wouldn't be surprised if they're back um, or if they're just kind of replaced with a similar type role player. Um, in that category, I have... 
Um, Tyrell Dodson, uh, Cam Lewis, Tommy Sweeney, Jaquan Johnson, question mark, uh, Justin Murray, AJ Klein, Bobby Hart, Van Roten, and Tyler Medikavich. Um, also going to throw in Dean Marlowe here and Jake Kumaro. Um, and I put the question mark on Jaquan Johnson there uh, because we had so much our depth was tested so much in the secondary this year uh, at the safety position. And with Poyer also being a free agent, um, not sure if he'll be back. Um, not sure what's going to be happening with him. Uh, DeMar Hamlin going forward. Um, Dean Marlowe, I'll put in the same category. Uh, maybe not the time to kind of let some depth walk. Uh, but not really sure what their plan is going to be there. I think we did see when Jaquan Johnson was starting um, that it wasn't the level that we were expecting or hoping for. Um, so I'm not sure how much of a priority he is to bring back, um, but he is a, a pretty big contributor on special teams. Um, same thing with Kumaro, Medikavich, um, even Klein in that bucket. I think some of these guys will be brought back Um, just for their special teams. I think this regime has shown that they really value special teams and they're willing to give out contracts for that. Um, Kind of in the same boat, a little bit different for me, Taiwan Jones. Um, I think Taiwan Jones has a contract on this team till he decides he doesn't want to play football uh, anymore. So if he does want to play next season, I kind of fully anticipate him being in the fold. Um, one guy I want to give a shout out to on that list, cause I've had my share of criticism for him in the past. And I think he was, um, great in a specialized role this year. And that's Bobby Hart. Um, if you can keep him around for cheap and keep using him as that, that eligible tight end, uh, you know, big tackle in, in running situations, uh, I'm fine with him sticking around. Uh, Roger Saffold, kind of already know my thoughts on him uh, going going from the first segment. Um, I think he was disappointing last year, and I, I don't really need to see him brought back. Uh, Case Keenum, we didn't really get to see him play at all. Um, I think this is going to be a position where we kind of keep rotating out the backup quarterback position. Um, kind of see what happens with the quarterback carousel every year and make our decision from there. Uh, Jordan Phillips and Shaq Lawson. I always got to put these two guys together. I think they were both really good this season. Um, when Von Miller goes down, I think Shaq Lawson was arguably the number two defensive end on this team. Um, and I think Jordan Phillips was really impactful when he was healthy. Um, now, whether or not you can count on that health kind of remains to be seen. Um, but if you can get both those guys back on another I don't know, one-year deal, something like that, I, I would gladly have both of them back in the fold. Um, I think predictively here, we maybe see one but not the other, and my guess would be it would be Shaq Lawson. Um, Questenberry is on, on the free agent list. Um, he's another guy that... When he was pressed into action, I think he played okay at times and pretty bad at other times. Uh, The type of player that you're kind of hoping doesn't have to spend too much time in the lineup. Uh, But overall, I I would say maybe I'm not dissatisfied with him. Um, So wouldn't mind seeing him back. And I kind of have Ike Butker in in the same bucket there. he was coming off of the injury, and I, I think he I think he was fine last year. Um, offensive line is somewhere that needs – it's a position group that needs to be improved in general. Um, so I guess it's going to depend to me on, you know, what improvements they make there, who they add in free agency, um, the draft, whatever. It's going to be a numbers game. Um, but a couple of these guys can stick around. And then – uh, one more to talk about before we get to what I consider kind of the bigger names, the big decisions to make, and it's Sam Martin. And 
I don't know what they're going to do with Sam Martin, but we don't talk about punting a ton on this show. And I think he did a great job last year. Um, we didn't have any shanks going all over the place. Uh, we didn't have to talk about any holding issues. Um, we went back to not really having to talk about punting very much. I don't know what his price tag is going to be. And if they want to try to, you know, replicate that with somebody else and not really have to invest too much money in the position. Um, but I would, I would be glad to have Sam Martin back. Uh, I, I would predict that that's something that they don't want to deal with again. Um, and I, I would anticipate Sam Martin coming back. Um, so the biggest names that I have here in free agency and my prediction are going to be Jordan Poyer, Tremaine Edmonds, um, Dane Jackson, who is a restricted free agent, and um, Devin Singletary. Um, so we'll start out with Singletary. He is another player that I would gladly have back. Um, I don't think he's impossible to replace. Um, there's huge running back class this free agency you got guys like Saquon out there um, just a ton of names Jamal Williams I think this one is going to be strictly dependent on where the market goes and what the Bills think of him versus the rest of the market um, and I, I guess more so what other teams think of Singletary um, you know, if the Bills are able to bring him back for like $3 million a year, I think we see, see Singletary back again. Um, I do think that there's going to be a team out there um, that sees what he was able to do in kind of a limited role in Buffalo and be willing to give him something like $6 million a year. And the Bills are going to, you know, say, good for you, man. Go get your money. Um, if he was back, I'm, I'm not going to be upset about that. I think he's been a great locker room guy, a great teammate. Um, we've seen him get production with pretty bad lines in front of him. He's great at mi making people miss. Um, running back's just not a position that I want to make a huge investment in. And for the usage on this team, I think you can kind of um, give Cook a little bit more on his plate and bring in somebody that's a little bit more of a between the tackles slumper for that goal line and short yardage um, situations. So it's not always Josh Allen. Um, my prediction there is Singletary kind of priced himself out of Buffalo and we don't see him back. Uh, Dane Jackson being a restricted free agent. Uh, this one I think is pretty easy. Um, he's shown that he's capable of being at least like an average range starter. This makes me think of like the Levi Wallace. Um, I don't think he's going to get offered a huge contract and, you know, the bills have an opportunity to, you know, have the last say in, in matching money or anything like that. I think Dane Jackson is, is brought back on kind of a low end contract. Um, we see Elam take over the starting CB2 role next year and Dane Jackson is your your insurance policy of a guy that knows the system, has spent some time starting, and a guy that they kind of trust within the system. Um, again, very very much like a Levi Wallace, where uh, there's value to this team in keeping guys like that around. So I think we see him back. Um, Tremaine Edmonds. Kind of a, a lightning rod for Bills Mafia. Some love him, some hate him. Nobody's kind of just in between on him. Uh, I'm kind of in between on him. Um, I think I can acknowledge that his size and speed does a lot for this defense. I think there's something to be said for, you know, being a starter, you know, right from his rookie year, still being young, but having five years of experience in, um, it's the contract that scares me here that I don't, I don't know if I would place that value um, on the middle linebacker position. That being said, just listening to the way McDermott and Bean talk about Edmonds, I predictively think there's a very, very, very good chance that Edmonds is back. 
Um, you hear Bean talk about, you know, that kind of being the archetype of draft, develop, resign. We've seen it with so many players, um, Knox, Allen, um, Trey White, all these guys, they, they try to get their guys re-signed before the market kind of blows up. Well, I think the biggest issue here is um, the the uh, Ravens giving Roquan Smith the extension, um, which kind of set the linebacker market for this offseason. Um, I anticipate Edmonds re-signing with the Bills, and I anticipate it for being a higher number than I would like to see. Uh, which brings me to Jordan Poyer, uh, one of my favorite guys on the team, and this one's going to kill me to say, I don't think we see Poyer back. Uh, I think we're looking at a spot where we keep hearing, you know, you can't keep them all, you can't keep them all, it's going to have to end sometime, you can't pay everybody. Uh, this is the guy I didn't want to see it happen with, though. Um, just not really being able to see this defense with Elam, Trey White, Micah Hyde, and Poyer, and Taron Johnson all healthy back there. That's kind of what I wanted to see this whole season, and we never got it. Um, I think the age is going to come up as a factor, and Poyer's kind of looking for that last contract, the last decent-sized contract, and it's it's going to be a numbers game, and I think bringing back Edmonds is going to be a big factor on why we can't keep Poyer, um, which kind of bums me out. Uh, I think healthy Poyer and Hyde are still top two, three safety duos in this league. And having Elam be in the system for a year and start getting some experience and Trey White being able to get back into, you know, fully being healed from that ACL, really starting to catch his stride again, have a full off season, have all of them doing off season workouts and, and practicing together and working in the system. Um, even if it was a short contract for Poyer and he was only around for a year or two more, I want to see that I want to see this group that they were putting together all be on the field at the same time and go ahead and watch them play defense and give opposing quarterbacks fits. So uh, really hopeful that they can get something done with Poyer. Um, I feel like we honestly would have seen it by now if it was going to happen. So my number one, <laughs> number one on this list that I, I hope I'm wrong about. Um, but let me know what you guys think. Um, drop a comment. Uh, that's going to do it for this week's episode, though. Next week, we're going to be talking about uh, free agents in the NFL, kind of wish list guys that I would like to see, uh, maybe a couple predictions of where I think the Bills might be looking and the type of player that they might bring in, a um, couple names. Uh, but thank you again for joining me on this week's episode, and we'll see you next Monday. Go Bills. Go Bills.